All right, so what I'm looking for and what I'm gonna ask everyone to help me keep an eye out for are Chinese mantis egg cases, also called Uthika. So if you're not familiar with Chinese mantises, they are the really big ones that are four inches, sometimes five inches long. Uh, they're not native and some people consider them invasive. Uh, Yes, they can. There, there are multiple photos of them eating hummingbirds. Is that what I would call praying mantises? Yes, a praying mantis. We do have a native species, which is awesome, but they are about two inches long and very differently colored. And their egg cases look different as well. So actually in the garden, we actively remove Chinese mantis egg cases throughout the winter. So we'll cut them and we actually donate them to another land manager who has chickens um, so they can uh, have some fun with the protein packed egg cases. Um, they just eat it in that form? They can or you can hatch them and then they'll eat all the babies but that's always something to be considerate of because uh, then of course you've got some potentially rogue Chinese mantises. Uh, so the problem with with Chinese mantises is a lot of their size so when we compare two inches to four to five inches uh, that appetite very very different so the Chinese mantises are eating larger things they're eating more things uh, and also there are many 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 more of them each year in the garden we remove about 200 Chinese mantis egg cases and I have only ever found two of our native mantis egg cases so a lot of people say, well, they're acting as predators in the garden. And you say, yes, well, maybe a little bit too well. So uh, ultimately, we're not going to be able to get rid of them, but we can have a local effect. So, um, you know, sometimes people are going through their gardens and they'll see a pile of butterfly wings. I can guarantee if you look whoop, right up from there, you'll find a Chinese mantis, uh, where our native mantises are not big enough to consume that much. So they have much less of a, an effect on our pollinators and they're eating things that are smaller like scales or mites or other things that we generally consider pests. But they are generalists, so they'll eat whatever they can get their hands on. But again, they're not eating quite as much. So Chinese mantis egg cases look like little round tan styrofoam balls. You're usually gonna find them wrapped around thin stems of perennials or small twigs things like that. And when we compare that to our native mantis, which is called the Carolina mantis, their egg cases are flat, they're dark brown, and they have a light stripe down the center. They're more rectangular and flatter, and they're usually laid on uh, trunks of trees. They don't wrap around a stem. So I highly doubt we'll find one of those. Maybe we'll get lucky, but let's keep our eyes out for the round tan styrofoam balls on small little twigs and stuff. As so walk. funny thing, I find praying mantises hatching when I'm um, harvesting wine berries. All the time, Yeah. all the time. I always have to be careful when I'm picking them to make sure they get in my little baggie and then I have to try to get the little half inch or one inch praying mantis, less than, less than an inch out of there. Interesting, so interesting. So I know there's wine berries like right up behind there, so maybe on the way out we can That seems there. like a perfect, those those really thin canes at the end mm -hmm. feel like a perfect place for that little oh, Chinese mantis to and lay. Um, so they're both going to be hatching around the same time and it's going to be, yeah, late June, early July. They're mature in August is when I find most of my, August and September, most of my adults. Did you have a question? They did. Um, are the invasive ones prey, no pun intended, on the native ones? Is that why you think there are less or is that just natural that there's less? So that's an interesting question. I don't know, but I wouldn't be surprised if they eat them. I think it's a little bit more of competition. So um, they're taking that kind of predator space in those in those um, you know small ecosystems, those little spaces. But it's possible they're actively feeding on them as well. So um, yeah, and with invasive things, there is just a natural lack of predators. So it could be that despite the fact that they've been here since the mid 1800s, our native predators like birds and things haven't quite adapted to 
eating those really big mantises yet. Um, whereas again, our smaller mantises might, they've been coexisting for a very long time. So they fit more into that predator kind of cycle. Sam, have you heard anything about the European mantises? Yes. So they're another of our non-native mantis. We have three non-native mantises <laughs> and one native mantis. Um, European mantis, in my opinion, is less prolific, at least in my experience in this area. Their egg cases are similarly tan, similarly look like styrofoam, but they're elongated. They're like ovals, uh, but they're also generally laid on the sides of stems. European mantises are smaller than the Chinese mantises, but still bigger than our native mantises. Right. So this whole kind of level. And then uh, our third non-native mantis is a narrow winged mantis. They look the most like our native mantis in size and their egg cases look most like our native mantis. But I also, again, have found that they are not nearly as prevalent as the Chinese mantis. And so. I think that the Carolina mantis was named Carolina mantis because that's where it was first found, but now it is all over the United Correct. States. Correct, it's think, an right? Eastern species. Yeah, so sometimes when something has Virginia or Carolina in the name, it doesn't necessarily mean that's the only place it's found. It means that it is one of the places that it's found, so. All right, let's see if we can keep an eye out. We're going to keep our toes and feet warm. We found a praying mantis casing. Just I, in time. I, I, I the Very end. All right, everyone. So here we have a <laughs> Chinese mantis egg case or infica. Some of you might be like, oh, that looks very familiar. But um, so if I can pass it around, feel free to kind of squeeze it. It does feel like styrofoam um, and it's got that tan, light tan color and see how round it is. Well, fairly round, especially compared to the uh, native mantis egg case. So it is interesting. Uh, these can be used by downy and hairy woodpeckers sometimes. Sometimes you'll see one with a hole right here. And that means that a woodpecker has come through destroyed it and got all the yummy guts out of there. Um, but I don't think that that is a reason to keep them, especially if you are gardening um, with wildlife in mind in all of these other ways. So and there it don't is. don't let that little thing surprise you. We had one in our pond one year and we weren't quite, this was a long time ago, we weren't sure what it was. And they all, they all came out in July, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable how many of yeah. them and how yeah. fast they grew. Each one of these probably has a couple hundred. They're so teeny tiny and they emerge looking like itty bitty mantises because they, um, they have something called hemimetabolus metamorphosis, which is a very, very long word for essentially saying they don't have a caterpillar phase, they don't have a larval <laughs> phase. So when we talk about butterflies, you know, they've got caterpillar, chrysalis, and then adults. When something is hemimetabolous, it goes through incomplete metamorphosis. That means that it's got an egg phase, which is, you know, the eggs are inside of this Vipika, the case. Um, but then when they emerge, they look very much like the adult. Sometimes color is different. Um, but in general, the shape is very similar to the adult. They're just smaller and they're not, they can't like mate yet. So they'll molt, they'll get bigger, their molt will get bigger. And then in their final stage, that's when they can mate and they can fly. So. Because if they weren't scary enough already, I didn't know they could fly. Oh yeah, they're not very good at it, but they can. Yeah, yeah, they can fly. It's kind of, it is bizarre. I'm like, that's a dinosaur. That's a very, very small dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm taking this with me. Sometimes I empty my pockets at the end of the day. I've got like five. <laughs> Just as long as you get rid of them before they hatch in your car. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. So if, if we happen to find them while we're walking along, what's the best thing for us to do? To get rid of them? So you can step on them if you don't want to take them out. You right. can put them on the ground, give them a nice stomp. What do you do if you take them out? Uh, or if you take them out, you can uh, put them in the freezer or you can double bag them. So.